In this lecture, we are going to look at a very special continuous distribution, namely the normal distribution. The normal distribution is the most important continuous distribution. It describes the distribution of many variables that arise in the, in the everyday world. For example, if we measure the height or the weight of a group of people. Also, if you think of something like the marks achieved in a test by students or the annual sales of a firm. The normal distribution is also very important when we get to statistical inference because it describes the distribution of possible estimates of a population parameter. The density function for the normal distribution is given here on this slide and you will note that if x follows the normal distribution, x can take on any value from minus infinity to infinity. And also this density function has two parameters. It's got sigma, which is the standard deviation, and mu, which is the mean. Okay, so the properties of the normal distribution, these two parameters, mu, the mean, and sigma square, the variance, fully defines the distribution. The normal distribution is bell-shaped and symmetrical around the mean. And then approximately 68% of the total area below the curve lies between the limits mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma for the upper limit. So the mean minus one standard deviation for the lower limit, the mean plus one standard deviation for the upper limit. And then approximately 95% of the total area below the curve lies between the limits mu minus two standard deviations for the lower limit mu plus two standard deviations for the upper limit. And then approximately 99.7%, almost 100% of the total area below the curve lies within three standard deviations of the mean. The two tails of the normal distribution approach the horizontal axis, but they never touch the axis. When we indicate that the random variable x follows the normal distribution, we make use of this notation. And we first of all give the mean as the first parameter, and then the second parameter uh, is the variance. So take note that the second parameter is not a standard deviation, it is the variance. So next we will look at the influence of these two parameters on the shape of my distribution. So what we have here is we've got a normal density with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one or a variance also of one. And you can see that this distribution is symmetrical and bell shaped. And if you look at the area under the curve between minus one and one, that area will be approximately 68% of the total area under the curve. And then the area under the curve from minus two up until two, that is then within two standard deviations of the mean, that area is about 95% of the total area under my density function. Okay, so now to look at the influence um, of the parameters on the shape of the density, I'm first going to change the mean. So I'm changing my mean to minus 4. So now the blue density has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. The red density has a mean of minus 4, so it shifted to the left, and it still has a variance of 1. So these two densities differ only um, with regard to the location but the spread for these two densities are the same. So next I'm going to look at the influence of the second parameter, namely the variance. Okay, so my blue distribution again has the mean of zero and a variance of one. My red distribution has a mean of zero, so it's also symmetrical around zero, but it has a variance of four. So there's more spread in the distribution for the red curve than for the blue one. 
Lastly, I'm going to change both the mean and the variance for my red curve. So here we have two normal distributions. The blue one has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. The red one has a mean of minus 4, therefore it lies to the left. And it's got a variance of 4, so there is more spread in the red curve than for the blue one. Now if a normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1, we call it the standard normal distribution. And a standard normal variable we always indicate by z. So z follow the normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Any normal random variable x can be converted into the standard normal variable z. So suppose I've got a random variable x that follows a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. I can standardize this random variable by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. So note that we divide by the standard deviation and not by the variance. Through standardization, probabilities for any normal distribution can be looked up from the table of the standard normal distribution. For example, if I have a random variable y that follows the normal distribution with a mean of minus 2 and a variance of 6.25, I can standardize this random variable by subtracting the mean of minus 2 and dividing by the standard deviation of 2.5. So the 2.5 is just the square root of my variance, which is 6.25. Now suppose, for example, that I want to find the probability that this random variable y is less than minus 4. Um, to find that probability, I will standardize. So how do I standardize? I take my y minus 4, I subtract from that the mean of minus 2, and I divide by the standard deviation of 2.5. So that is the same as the probability that a standard normal variable z is less than minus 0 0.8. And to illustrate that visually, on the left hand side here, I have the density of my random variable y with a mean of minus 2 and a variance of 6.25. The probability that y is less than minus 4 is given by the blue shaded area under my curve. Now that area is exactly the same as the area, the blue shaded area on the right, where I have the density function of the standard normal distribution, z, and I look at the area towards the left of minus 0.8. Okay, this is an example of the standard normal tables um, that we can use to find any probability for any normal distribution. And in the next lecture, we will look at how we can use these standard normal tables to find different probabilities.